Well, hello, everyone. What a keynote that was. And we're going to recap it all today with hashtag Ask Firebase Live. Now, that was a lot of stuff. We had the off emulator, import segments, crash lytics, uh, streaming to BigQuery. My, my mind's just like going crazy with all the stuff that, you know, was talked about there. All the stuff with remote config. It's, it, you know, there was a lot. And we're going to cover it all today in this live episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. But I'm just one person. Uh, David East, by the way, I don't think I mentioned my name. But I'm one person and I need somebody else to help me. So if you would all please give a warm welcome to Tali Sasson. Hi, everybody. Wasn't that keynote awesome? I loved it. I, me too. Oh yeah, I'm, I was a big fan. So Tally, I know who you are, and I'm very excited to have you as my co-host today. But I would like if you could tell the audience a little bit about yourself, the, the Tally backstory. Sure, sure. Yeah, I can. I am an engineering leader in Firebase, and I get to work with a lot of the awesome teams that build some of those products that you saw mentioned in the keynote. Products like Firebase Performance, Crashlytics, Remote Config, and a bunch more. So I'm really excited to answer your questions today. And we do, we have quite a lot of questions, but I, I yeah. always like, I like to open these with uh, what I call the icebreaker. Okay. And so just kind of get things going. So uh, between the two of us, I'm gonna ask you what your favorite part of the keynote was. Oh, okay, well, that that's a great question. I think I have two answers. Can I do two answers? Uh, I don't know if that breaks the rule. You know quick. what? That's fine. You're, that's fine. Okay, I'll, okay. You can have to. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, well, you know what? I really loved seeing the new Firebase performance dashboard. You know, there's some mm, amazing improvements there, and I just love the fact that it allows users to really customize to ensure their most important performance metrics are visible and available. So I liked that. And, and then it I looks also, good. Yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, I was excited about it. Um, and then I also think, you know, maybe folks spotted Ibrahim had a pretty amazing sunset in the background. I just thought that that was, that was like a side, a side benefit of that keynote. It was like, oof, that is a nice backdrop there. It's like a good setting. So those were See, my I, two. I shouldn't let you have two because that was my one. It was Ibrahim's oh, sunset. No. So you just... Left oh, no. right in there and took. What is this my, gonna mean? Uh, oh no. Oh man. Oh, Do you have a backup? I I mean it's easy to have a backup, but yeah, Abraham's sunset. I, I remember watching that one before. Amazing. And I, I had to drop the whole message into the Firebase chat. And I was like, has people seen like the, like Ibrahim's sunset? I was just like, whoa. Yeah. That, that just blew my mind. So yeah, uh my favorite thing, I that's tough. It's hard to pick a favorite, but I would say my favorite part was probably the auth emulator, not just because I got to, you know, do the little part there, but just because I have been wanting that feature for so yeah. long. Uh, it's it's close though, like you know, crash lit extreme. There, there's so much. So yeah, it was exciting. So I, I think we have some questions now. I'm really excited. Okay. There were so many that came in. So uh, let's uh, let's load up the first question. Get into so, it. Let's see here. Let me get up to my sheet. Uh, so the first question is from Ellison. Ellison asks, can I import users to the auth emulator when it boots up? Well, thank you for your question, Ellison. That's that's a very good question. So I, I think I can take this one, or do you want to take Tally? Yeah, go take? for it. Okay, all right. So uh, right now, the auth emulator, it's brand new. Very excited about it. We don't have any command line flags or UI in it just yet to do uh, bulk importing and exporting of users, uh, but that is on our roadmap, and we really want to add that in. Uh, in the meantime, there are uh, local REST endpoints because the emulator runs on your local machine where you can run, you kind of send some post requests and uh, seed your users after it boots up. And uh, you can also do some uh, scripting depending on what kind of login flow you're doing. Uh, so you can do that. And one nice little thing, if you're doing testing with the, I uh, just sort of, sorry, local development with the auth emulator is when you create a user with like third party. So uh, like, so, you know, with Google sign-in, you can create that user, click a button to generate all of the UI that pops up uh, for that user, and then their profile sticks around in that session. So it's uh, it kind of retains cool. all the users you've created. So it's it makes development so much easier and 
uh, I've been using it and I, I, I've just been so excited about it. So I, you should all really try it. If, you have, if you're still testing on Firebase projects, like a test Firebase project, and you're not on the emulator yet, now could not be the, a better time for you to make that switch to the Firebase emulator because it's awesome. So, Yeah, totally agree. That, that's definitely exciting to be able to solve those problems for folks. Yes, and so our next question is ready. So our next question comes from Kevin. And Kevin asks, is there some way I can see my performance data from Firebase Performance for a specific crash in Crashlytics? Now, I think this is one, Tally, that you know just a, just a lot about, actually. So I'm going to let yeah, you Yeah, I'd love to this answer one. this one. Thank you so much for the question, Kevin. So, you know, I think that there's a, a couple different answers here. The first one is that both Firebase performance and Crashlytics data can be exported to BigQuery. And that's definitely the easiest way that you can join these two data sets to be able to really dig into specific performance trends for different crashes. So that's one awesome approach to use. The other thing I just wanted to mention real quick is, as you heard in the keynote, we are hard at work making Firebase performance more real time. And that is gonna be really useful because you'll be able to match the data in performance monitoring with the real time data that you already see in Crashlytics. So I think that it'll make it a lot easier to be able to dig into performance for specific crashes. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So um, let me see here. So, more questions, uh, more questions? I think, yeah, I think we should do another question. So I think we should. our next question is from Crystal. And Crystal asks, how's the pricing on BigQuery for streaming mm -hmm. and querying this data? So with uh, Crashlytics streaming, you uh, get all the benefits of the uh, free tier within BigQuery, which is pretty big. I. I I know I had to go there, but um, sh but uh, so the the big query free tier, I think you get. I don't have my cheat sheet in front of me because I, I think closed it's it ten up. ten gigabytes yeah. of storage, yes. right? Yeah, and then one terabyte of queries. Yes, I believe so. And you get ten gigabytes of your create model queries, which is more once you know you, you don't need to know exactly what it is before you get involved with BigQuery, but it's also a large amount of of free tier usage. Sure. So. Uh, the more finer grain points uh, are available on cloud's uh, pricing documentation, which you totally check out. It's a very, very good site. Uh, but you can get started uh, and do a lot. And all the all those free tier numbers are monthly, per month, too. So there's a lot that you can go through in a month before you even worry about uh, any type of billing. So mm -hmm. that was a very good question. Yeah, that's great. Our next question, uh, and I, I like this question quite a bit. So the next question is from Kareen, and I'm, I'm sorry to anyone today. I'm just going to throw that disclaimer out. If I mispronounce your name, it's because my brain is working way too fast, and, and I, I'm just, just not going to be able to put all that together. So I'm doing my best, but you can, all, you can hit me up afterwards and be like, you said my name wrong, and I can learn. Uh, but Kareen, this is a fantastic question. Uh, how can I create better automated testing in Firebase projects? My team struggles a lot with integrating Firebase to, into our CI CD. So, uh, Tally, you want to take the first? Yeah, I'll, I can take a first stab and then you can add to it. You know, I think um, it really depends what you're looking to test. So I'll mention a couple different options and then, you know, David, definitely add on. Keep, keep me honest here. So the first one that comes to mind for this would be Firebase Test Lab. Firebase Test Lab has a lot of really powerful functionality right out of the box, so that just by integrating it, you're able to get tests pre-release to make sure that you are checking some of your most important functionality. And then there's a lot of very powerful advanced uh, tests that you can add. So that is definitely a place I suggest getting started. In addition to that, we have app distribution. Now, that's a different kind of testing. I don't think it was quite what you're asking, but I just want to mention it here. If you want to make sure that you're actually testing out with actual users and sharing versions before they hit the app store, app distribution will allow you to do that on both iOS and Android. And you get some real user feedback, which, as we all know, is a critical part of the testing journey. And then... Yeah. 
I have one. I have one more in addition, just you, as you we're just going through going. this workflow. Yeah. So just one other thing, you know, uh, very often we we are releasing something new, but we're not super confident in it, even with all those tests. And remote config can be really helpful mm -hmm. there because Good it point. allows you to slow roll features or roll out features to specific segments of users. So they're able to ensure that they are being adopted and liked before you go fully all the way out. So that's just something else I wanted to add. What else you got? So I, you know, I'm just going to bring it back to the emulators. I, I wonder if I could answer every question that gets asked somehow with the emulators, if I can just like make it. You can try. It, you can I can try. try. All yeah. right. So I think if I get deep enough, I can I can do that. Uh, so, so yes, the emulators are also another great place specifically mm -hmm. for CI part of that. So there is the CI slash CD. Uh, and so for CI, if you're doing things with Firebase authentication, which now has emulator support, uh, you can run integration tests that will run fully within the framework of the emulator. And so you could be doing Cloud Functions triggers. Well, that will work with the emulator as well. If you're using Firestore or real-time database, that also works. All their local triggers work. And so yeah. the, any type of integration test work and a Something that's always important to call out and to really emphasize are testing your security rules. That mm. is super, super important. And Very the critical. emulator, yes. And the emulator allows that, the testing library, all of those things. If you can write a test harness that tests your security rules, run some integration tests, and then you run that in some CI pipeline that really makes you feel so much better when you're rolling out. And then when you're doing all the things that Tally was talking about, on top of that, you're doing extensive testing. You're rolling sure. features out you know, uh, slowly, and you're also sending distributions out to users. You are, you are checking all the boxes. And that, yep. that is how you have success. Absolutely, yeah. So was that an absolutely, or was that an absolutely? OK, I'll, I'll stop. Oh, absolutely. man, I know. Absolutely. 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 All right. But I'm sh all right. I think it's time. I'm going to get you a drum. What do you think? I, I could. I, I think I would probably mess that one up too. Uh, so the next question is from Nicola. So Nicola asks, how do you limit Firestore's reads and writes rates of not authenticated users? So I think I know this one, or do you, do you want me to take this one? Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have two ways of answering this question. Uh, so the first way is really with security rules. So security rules uh, have these magical uh, keywords or variables in them where you can check against specific values. And probably the most uh, commonly used one is the auth variable, where you can check to see the currently uh, authenticated state of the user. And that could be not authenticated or authenticated. So in this case, you can say, hey, for all of this sets of data, so this collection or, or something like that, if this user is not, authentic not authenticated, they can't read it. And so that, that right there already totally gets them out of the picture and solves that in one big sweeping you know, statement there. But if you're looking for more finer grain control, maybe rate limiting what users, uh, not authenticated users, have access to, then you will need to use a cloud function to have that type of control. To uh, so for every call, seeing what kind of access it goes to that. So those are my two ways. The security rules really covers like 99% uh, uh, of most people's cases. Uh, so I think that should help you. But yeah, that, that's that's what I do. Yeah, totally. All right, so our next question is from Rakesh. Rakesh asks, how can I configure my Cloud Functions tests to run, that's right, against the emulator? I know how to run the emulator, but I can't run tests against it. They still run against the live project. All right, Rakesh. Uh, actually, Tali, you mind if I take this one right off? Yeah, so, I mean, you you wanted to do emulator for every question, so I really it did. feels like mean to take it away from you. I, I I really appreciate that. That's truly kind of you. Um, so what? Uh, so this is actually something that um, you want to make sure your ports are lined up with the emulator. So uh, if you 
misconfigure the emulator in some way, or maybe it just like get the wrong port number, it can kind of trick you up. So what I recommend doing is starting from the top and do a Firebase init emulators. And this is going to go through sort of the emulator initialization wizard and make sure that everything is good to go. You selected everything. Uh, you may not have selected the uh, functions emulator, so it might not know to run. Right. You may have accidentally uh, so deselected it. Um, so make sure you've selected it there. Then check to see that you have the, what the port is. That will be located in firebase.json. And then when you run firebase emulators colon start, and then check that grid that gets displayed on the screen. Make sure that that functions one is displaying. And then if it is, you will see all of the uh, endpoints and everything printed out as well. And also the uh, Firebase uh, emulator UI in the logs will also show you in the logs that those emulators are running. And you can search for them uh, in the fuzzy search by name. And so you can really see that they're up there and running. Uh, and then from there, you should be good to go. So I would follow all of those steps. Uh, in your case, it's probably a port number might be mislabeled, like uh, off by one error, or you might not have it enabled, but you think you did, and it's just something slight like that. Because outside of that, there's no uh, connector code you need for the uh, Cloud Functions emulator, uh, unlike some of the other client SDKs. So those are the things I would do. And if you missed some of those steps, because that was your great list, always check out the Firebase docs where you'll be able yes. to see them summarized and some debugging tips there as needed. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we, we just had a big update to the emulator docs because of the auth emulator show. So yeah, that's very, so always exciting. Good the docs. So our next question is from Sinisha. I hope I said that right. Again, you have every right to come yell at me afterwards. Uh, a while back, Google Analytics was replaced with Firebase Analytics. But now I see this as being called Google Analytics again. Is this the same Google Analytics as a few, a few years ago, or is this different? Mm. That's Ali. Do you, I, I think sure. This is, yeah, I can take a stab at it. I right. mean, um, so the answer is it's the same. So Google Analytics is still providing all the analytics goodness that you're seeing within Firebase. Naming is hard. I think we've had a couple different iterations, but in the end, it is the same. And as you saw in that keynote, in Firebase, we work incredibly hand in hand with the folks in Google Analytics to make sure we're able to show the best possible experience right within the Firebase console. Yeah, totally. Uh, and if you want a very, very long backstory on this, you can check out a uh, blog post written by yeah. Todd Kerpelman, and he did one. And then I thought it was such a good blog post that he came on to the Firebase podcast, which if you like podcasts Amazing. and me rambling like this, you should check out the Firebase podcast because those two things happen on that one podcast. Huh. And Todd and I had a, a big discussion about this exact question. So Tally's answer was spot on. And if you were like, I want to know more about the evolution of Google Analytics from 2005 to what it is today, we have all that fully detailed. I'll give podcast. you the info. So I'm just curious. I, I've, uh, I've never been asked to be on this podcast. It's it's new, okay? I, I, hmm. I've had you... Check your check your inbox. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I just missed an email from you. You yeah, did, yeah, sure. obviously. Yeah. Just it's Great. crazy time of the year, you know. Really busy. I'm sure I was asked. Busy. Oh. Uh, okay, so we have another question now uh, <laughs> from Idris. Idris asks, "I don't want to be looking at my Firebase performance dashboard all mm -hmm. the time." Again, again, other things to look at. Uh, are there alerts or emails available to help monitor? Oh, this is a, this is also sure. a tally question. Yeah, it's a great question. So the easiest way to do this today is to make sure that you're exporting your data to BigQuery, and then you can create cloud functions that are triggered off of BigQuery. You mm -hmm. saw that in the keynote specific to Crashlytics examples, but it would work for Firebase performance as well. But one thing I want to add is that we really know that this is an area we can improve within Firebase performance, and we're looking to add alerts. So it's on the roadmap, and more to come soon. That's awesome. And I, I do love the pipeline with BigQuery. There, I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like you without you know, there's so many BigQuery updates, and it's just one of those things that I think uh, if you want to do so many amazing things, uh, like you know, obviously querying, yeah. but integrations, it really becomes that 
glue between so many different Firebase products For and sure. cloud. I, I'm, yeah, can, don't have any, I got so many great things to say about BigQuery. That's, that could be a whole nother ass Firebase. Yeah, we've we've done a bunch of really cool, powerful BigQuery talks before. So if folks are looking for more information about how to leverage BigQuery to get the most out of their Firebase data, there's a bunch of previous Firebase Summit talks on just that topic. Uh, do you know who might have done those talks? Oh, I did one, actually. Yeah. You did you one? Can look, you can look, um, I did a couple. You can look <laughs> me up and you can find some of the talks. And I think you'll hear more about BigQuery during the summit this year as well. I, I was really, I, I felt proud of my response. I'm like, you did one, because I thought you did two. <laughs> there there yeah. are a few out there, you know, always happy to talk to people about this. It's true. I would definitely go check out Tali's talks at uh, previous summits and, and Google I.O. Those are really great. If you're looking to get started with Firebase and BigQuery, yes, I would definitely go check those out. They're amazing. Um, our next question uh, comes from Eddie Emmy. And this question, this question is a, a good one. This is, it's got some meat on the bone. It says, where do you see Firebase in the next five years? And Tal, you've just been ripping through these, so I'm- Things are I'm heating gonna, up. Things are, are heating up here. We're getting, we we're getting into the big though. ones. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that this is a great question. It's something we talk about a lot too, I can tell you that much. I guess I would start with what's most important to Firebase is our mission, right? You heard Francis talk about in the keynote, and that is to help developers succeed. So when we think about the next five years, what's really critical to us is that we meet developers where they are, you know, whether that be startups getting off the ground or big enterprises that are building businesses on top of Firebase, we want to make sure that we're supporting you. And even though this question is asking about five years, I, I'll mention that this past year went a lot different than many folks expected. And that meant that Firebase needed to stay nimble and pivot, make sure that we were supporting folks who needed to get out critical apps quickly. And that's something that we really need to be able to continue to do over the next five years. So we're watching those market trends closely. Uh, to be more specific, I'd say there's a couple of market trends that we have our eye on. One is a big interest in investment in games, how Firebase could do more to support game developers. And the other one that we hear about a lot from you all is machine learning, right? How can we leverage the power of machine learning? How can Firebase make it easier for folks to be able to use machine learning? So these are areas that we're continuing to focus on and we're looking into adding lots of cool new stuff over the next five years with the goal of, you know, in the end, making it really easy for folks to build and operate their apps successfully. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like, Something that we've really looked at is uh, in terms of we want to like if you look at something like extensions and like the Stripe yeah. extension today, we really Firebase has always been since day one about lowering the barrier to development to, so to shipping to publishing your app just to building something. Uh, it's just been like the core principle since day one, and something like extensions uh, gets you there just so much faster, just less. Yes. Less glue in between and more shipping and doing. And also, because I found a way, we're also really big into tooling. So stuff like the emulators. Uh, oh, wow. Is, we got there. <laughs> we did it. I got there. I answered everyone with emulators. It's like all the way around. So, yeah. But but on a serious note there, tooling is very important. So making your yep. uh, development, like accelerating app development, making it so that you are getting done quicker, you're not stuck, wire, like figuring out how, how, why is this thing not working? Like, oh, right. like got to drop 17 debugger state. So, uh, yeah, I, that, I think that was actually a really good point that you just made, right? Well, you know, um, when we're thinking about how to help developers be successful, a lot of the times it is about taking the heavy lifting off their plates, right? Yep. We know what developers want to be focusing on is shipping awesome features for their users and not all the other stuff that really goes into making an app successful. So the more we can do to help and automate and be opinionated about how to do that successfully, hopefully the more time developers can spend doing what they love. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's I could spend I could spend another five years on that question. Oh gosh, I have to stop. But uh, I just <laughs> I'm I'm buying you a drum. I'm gonna I, show it to you. But we have a next question from Daniel, and Daniel asks, 
is it possible to simplify automated testing of Firebase authentication? Mm -hmm. Things like email sign-in, account merging, and such are quite hard to keep tested. Now, Tally, I'm going to give you one. I so appreciate this. You know, I know you want to answer this question. I can, I can see you're like, I know the answer to this. Get, what, what, I know the answer. How are we no. going to answer this question? I mean, I'm. Is it? I think it's the emulator. Well, let's. You know, I think first of all, it's a good question. And and to be honest with everybody, this is something that's been really challenging in the past. So mm -hmm. we're really excited for some of the announcements you saw today. And with the emulator, you're going to be able to run off locally, which means that you can actually much more easily build integration tests. So we are hoping that now with this new release, folks will be able to solve this problem much easier. Yeah, absolutely. It becomes so much easier if uh, if you like to do automated testing with things mm -hmm. like uh, if I'm a web developer, so all my examples are usually web based. Uh, Cypress IO is a really nice tool, or like WebDriver, something like that allows you to do UI automated testing. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do that, and you can do it all knowing that all of your code even on the Firebase side, is running locally. So the user that's being created uh, is running locally and then saving data against their UID and Firestore or the real-time database is done locally. So right. there's so many just fast automated tests. You're not worried about hanging around in CI, dealing with flaky tests and stuff like that. Just Nobody just, wants to do that, you know? No, no. I, I have spent plenty of my time dealing with uh, integration tests where you could just be like, okay, it's running time to make a sandwich, eat the sandwich, drink my coffee, and then... All the you free know, time. Yeah, you just get so much free time. We're, we're going to take that time away. <laughs> but it's a good thing. So yes, I, I'm really... Uh, yeah, the emulator, auth emulator is really going to help you with all the, the, the testing there. So definitely yeah, check sure. that out. Another great reason why if you are using a test Firebase project that you, know, you have to connect out to, uh, to start using the emulator. It is not only faster in terms of local development, uh, it's a no network you know, connections and no latency. It's also mm -hmm. the the development tools that are given to you in the emulator are great and they are development specific. So move on to the emulator. Can't say it enough. Totally. Awesome. So we have another question uh, from Paul. Paul asks, how do I get or set admin claims with Firebase off on Flutter? Mm. So uh, Tally, do you... Uh, you take this one. Say this one? I, okay. I, I stole your last emulator <laughs> question, so I feel like you need to take this one. Do you know how I'm going to answer this question, Tally? You know, I, I really don't. I, it just, I have no idea how you're going to answer. I'm excited to hear. Well, with the admin SDK, uh, you can... I only thought I was going to... That I was going to say the emulator. Yeah, but that was a good, that was very good, yeah. I did, a little little sneak there. Uh, so with the admin SDK, you can add uh, custom claims. So you can run an auth trigger that when a user signs up or based upon something, you can add the claims usually in a cloud function. I am not completely sure uh, off the top of my head if there is actually a certain spot with the client SDKs, because this would be the same for Flutter, uh, iOS, Android, you know, they're all mirror, very similar APIs. There's probably someone in the chat, probably Yu Chen or someone being like, actually, you can do this right now. But I'm not aware of any client SDKs off the top of my head that you can add uh, custom claims with. So you can do that off a trigger with the admin SDK. But if you're looking for a way to test this to make sure that you have it right, the emulators allow you to provide uh, custom claims in the UI. So there's a nice little text box where you can say with the new auth emulator UI, hey, these are my custom claims, save it. And so you can test that locally, which is really fast and efficient. So true to my word, answered it with the emulator still. <laughs> that was great. Great answer. All right. So that that is all the questions we've had today, Tally. That went by oh, wow. fast. So I quick. know. So quick. So uh, Honestly, we, we couldn't get all to them, get, get to them all. We only had 30 minutes, but keep the questions coming because we're going to yeah. be in the chat with you all day today. So, Tally, that was amazing. I could not have done it without you. You were the MVP of this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was great answering questions, and I'll keep answering them 
the whole summit long. So look forward to talking to you all then. All right. See you later, Tally. Bye. All right. Well, that that is all the time we have for hashtag Gas Firebase Live. That was awesome. Those questions were really, really good. And I was peeking over into the chat and I saw that there's so many more. So keep that coming because after this, all the live sessions are coming through or actual well, the uh, sessions that we pre-recorded, but the speakers are going to be in live with you chatting and asking you or you can ask them all the questions and just any conversation you want to have that's what we're there for so we're going to be here in the chat all day today and you know what's great about the firebase summit is that now it is a two-day long event so make sure to come back tomorrow morning same time as today which was 9 30 a.m pacific and we're going to kick it off with zero to app so if you like live coding or you like flutter uh, you like to see collaborative apps being built on the fly, then you're going to want to check that out. It's a, a really good session. So thank you all so much today for coming to Hashtag Ask Firebase Live, and I can't wait to see you in the chat. Have a great Firebase Summit.